This is the Italian Real Estate Podcast, here to help you with the ins and outs and basics of Italian real estate presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Italian Real Estate Podcast presented by ItalianRealEstateLawyers.com. Of course, we are back at it again with Italian attorney Marco Permunian. How are you doing, man? Good, how are you? I'm doing great, thank you. I'm glad to hear that you're doing well also. And today... Uh, Marco and I were just talking before this episode recording, and he was telling me about a new service that the team at I, Italian Real Estate Lawyers are offering, and that you guys are uh, now with so many requests for, from people to help them actually not just purchase property in Italy, but fully relocate to Italy, uh, that it's something that you guys have been helping more and more clients with and have added another uh, page to your website. So I was thinking maybe... In this episode, it could be worthwhile going into what it exactly it is that you guys are doing, how you're helping people move abroad, and maybe just filling people in on how they can work with you and what would be involved with working with Italian real estate lawyers. So Marco, could you tell us a little bit about some of the services that you're offering and uh, how you're offering them as well? Yeah, it all started with helping people purchase properties and, and renting properties in Italy for them. But uh, recently, I mean, in the past couple of years, a lot of people, more and more people, as you said, have started to ask us for more help. And uh, specifically, with help not only with the reloc- with the uh, purchase of a property in Italy, but also with the complete relocation process, which can be challenging at time and maybe difficult to navigate sometimes especially if you don't speak Italian or if you haven't traveled to Italy many times before in your life so a lot of people they they've asked us to basically help them from the very beginning of the process to the the end of the relocation process and so we what we do is we help people plan their relocation when they're still living in their home countries and we take care of uh, things like visas if they need a visa to relocate to Italy so if it's not an EU citizen as, as we all know and as we said in many of our videos EU citizens can relocate to Italy uh, without the need to apply for a visa even if there are some requirements and some uh, some things that need to be done even if you're an EU citizen when you relocate to Italy for example you need to register as a resident if you want to use the healthcare system or many other um, if, if you want to take advantage of many other uh, things that the Italian government offers to EU citizens but if you are a non-EU citizen then you do need a visa to relocate to Italy and, and a very popular visa is the elective residency visa which is not only for people who are retired, but for, for everyone who has passive income and can support themselves without the need to look for a job in Italy or other visas that are uh, requested often by people uh, are the, uh, the student visas, for example, for people who want to um, go to school. And then there are several other visas that that the Italian government offers to foreigners like the self-employment visa or the um, work visa if you have an employer in Italy and uh, or for example the investor visa which is for it's meant primarily for high net worth individuals but no matter what the circumstances are uh, what visa you need we help you achieve your dream uh, to relocate to Italy and the first step is uh, obtaining a visa unless of course you can qualify for Italian citizenship and and I believe people know by now that we help um, people a lot of people apply for citizenship by descent but not only, not only citizenship by descent we help them uh, apply for citizenship through marriage or through residency and we've done we've recorded single specific episodes on each one of these topics so people who are interested in understanding how these visas work how citizenship by descent or by marriage work they can look at those uh, they can watch those episodes to to gather more information but um 
the relocation process, it involves not only getting a visa or applying for citizenship, but also registering as a resident. So a lot of people upon upon relocation to Italy, they do not know because it's not common in, 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 in a lot of countries to, to have to do so, but they have to register as residents. For example, in America, it doesn't really work like that. But in Italy, uh, once you obtain a visa, but even if you are an Italian citizen, uh, the prerequisite to use many of the local services, so offered by the local governments, but also by the national government, uh, is to register as a resident, which which involves basically um, uh, going to the town hall and, and in, in the municipality where you reside and, and signing a few forms. And, and what it gives you is the right, for example, to use the health care system if your visa allows you to do so um, or if you're a citizen of course you can do so and another prerequisite to use uh, the services offered to the population in Italy is uh, getting a tax code which doesn't necessarily mean like we said in other episodes to um, have to pay taxes in Italy it's just a an alphanumeric number that is assigned to Italian residents, mostly even if non-Italian residents can also get a tax code, for example, people who want to purchase or rent a property in Italy. But if you are an Italian resident, a tax code will be very helpful if you want to enter into a, a rental agreement, if you want to purchase a house, but even if you want to register with the national healthcare system, or even if you want to purchase a SIM card now, yeah. uh, as opposed to the past, they um the local stores they normally ask you for your tax code yeah. um even for prepaid plans sorry to interject there it's just no that's that a good point. one that one the the codice fiscale this uh, personal tax identification number is so very important for many aspects of life in italy like you'll be using it left and right and even correct me if i'm wrong here but even during the residency process they do ask you for your codice fiscale or am i wrong about that no, that's true. That's true. And like you said, I believe they don't even sell you any more prepaid SIM card if you do not have a tax code. And that's, of course, required to be sure of the identity of the person who purchases a um, SIM card. But then we also help our clients apply for um, an Italian ID, which is also very um useful if you don't want to carry your passport around now it only re releases this uh, plastic ids which fit very well in your wallet and just a few years ago we still had in italy these bigger paper ids i don't know which one you had i still have the paper one <laughs> it's so annoying <laughs> yeah, because some towns they just change now and even the thing is they they didn't let you replace the paper one with right. the plastic one unless you um you've lost your plastic uh, your right. paper one or upon expiration yeah I actually I, I was one time at the comune i was taking care of something else and i was asking like hey can i update my carta d'identità to the new carta d'identità electronica the the the, the electron the um, plastic uh id card and they said no just just lose your card wink wink <laughs> like of course this is not legal advice but it's just <laughs> i thought it was a bit funny <laughs> like no you have to wait until the expiry date of your um of your your id otherwise if you happen to lose it well then there's nothing that you can do <laughs> i'm keeping mine for the time being i'm not planning on losing it anytime soon <laughs> i think it's like to some extent nicer definitely, oh, definitely. not 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 easier to carry but i'd say nicer oh oh well you know there is something that's really interesting i mean we're going off on a tangent here but i just think it's something that's so unique to that part of the world i think there are some other countries that used to have these paper id cards because it's just something that's from such a different era that uh, at most places they have these plastic id cards and it's just like kind of looks like the same thing everywhere and then you, in Italy, you get your little paper booklet. <laughs> I like it, but I've actually had a couple of wallets ruined by those paper uh, IDs and because you have to get the plastic case. Otherwise, they just disintegrate on their own. Yeah, I, I, I just replaced mine. I, I had the paper one for a very, very long time. I'm happy now mm. it can fit in my wallet, finally. I have to admit I'm jealous. <laughs> 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 anyway, sorry, to, to maybe get to, to get back on. 
um, you were saying about these these uh, pl plastic cards, but they if it, just a quick question, it's not just for citizens that they issue identity cards. It's also for people who are coming in as residents, or, or am I mistaken about that? Yes, exactly. So only for people who reside in Italy, whether they're citizens or non-citizens, I believe it can only be because they, this changes at times. But right now, if you are an Italian citizen, then you can request your ID, even if you reside abroad, but only within the EU. In the US, at this time, if I'm not mistaken, they still don't give the ID to uh, Italian citizens that reside outside of the European Union. I think it has to do with you know budget and you know how expensive it is to to the printers um, and everything mail it abroad or even make it abroad. So yeah. uh, only people who reside in Italy or in the EU tend to have the possibility to um, have hold a uh, plastic um, ID. That's really good to know about all of these different services that you're offering. And so basically, I guess a breakdown might be worthwhile getting into about like, what are the specific services? So it's the relocation plus the immigration, like the legal aspect. And what are some of the other like bullet points of the, the services that you guys offer? Uh, we help a lot of people. They ask us to help them with uh, logistics. So with uh, transferring their belongings to Italy, which is not easy at times. If you have a lot of things that you want to move from, from the US, a lot of people, they sell their house in the US. And, you know, so they're ready. They, they, they trust us with their, basically with, with the transfer of their, their, their lives, uh, entire lives in Italy. So all of their belongings and they, 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 they no longer have a house in Italy. So it's, it's very important to, um, transfer and, and arrange the transfer very efficiently. And so we help with that too. Um, and then we also help with a number of issues that normally people have to face when relocating to a foreign country, including Italy. So we help people, for example, uh, setting up bank accounts. We help people um, deal with taxes in Italy. At times directly, at times we refer uh, one of our partner accountants, uh, when there are very specific matters related to taxation, for example, dual citizens. And, um, and of course, we help people purchase properties in Italy, so purchase their house, which is something that can be done from abroad uh, before they relocate to Italy. Um, I've said this in many videos, it's possible to purchase a house even if even if you're not a resident in Italy. So even uh, prior to becoming a resident in Italy and even prior to uh, actually physically relocating to Italy because it's possible to grant a power of attorney to an attorney to, to us in, 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 in my case and, and we can help people purchase uh, the house that they want in the area that they want and, and a service that, they, that is always or often I should say requested is help in determining the area in which it is best to buy their first property. A lot of people, they are not, they're still not experts uh, in how things work in Italy, what the territory looks like. Uh, where it's best to purchase based on their specific needs, based on where they were living back in the U.S. So they want to maybe find something similar, a similar atmosphere or um, based on the vicinity to an airport. That's a very frequent request. So we help and consult on all of that. And some people, they don't want to commit to purchasing a property from the very beginning. They want to kind of uh, look around. So they ask us to help them rent a property at first for a number of months. Mm -hmm. And so we help them with the lease agreement, sometimes with a temporary lease agreement, because they know already that they want to stay in that specific location only for a number of months or with a normal lease agreement. And then maybe there's an early termination of such agreement. So we help with all of these processes um, together and, and we offer a package of services and, you know, people can, uh, decide what services they want to include in this package, but these are more or less all of the services that we can offer and that can be included in this relocation service that we introduced based on 
a number of requests that we have been getting from from our clients. That's really a huge benefit to be able to have that help along the way. And especially, I mean, just something very briefly that you touched on there, that helping your clients to get into a rental before getting into a final uh, purchase, that alone is major. I know that in Italy, it can be a bit complicated sometimes to get uh, things set up. And especially for a non-Italian speaker, uh, it, there may be certain aspects of getting things like utilities set up that may be a little bit unusual. Is this something where Italian real estate lawyers can also help? Yeah, we help a lot of people. And I'd say probably almost all of our clients who purchase a rent uh, a property with us, and especially people who want to uh, purchase this service, this package that we're talking about in this episode, we help them uh, set up utilities. I know in America, it's much easier to uh, set up utilities. Uh, for example, when you're renting, it's just a matter of calling uh, the providers, and it will take just a couple of minutes in Italy. And I'd say in Europe, uh, yeah. it's it's much, and I, I know you. I know you lived in Italy for, and you have experience uh, specifically with rentals. Fortunately, unfortunately, <laughs> and and I'm sure you you remember. You can maybe comment yeah. on that, well, but it was it wasn't easy. Yeah, well, the thing was actually, um, you guys did help me with that at one point. Oh, you yeah. did help me through the process, uh, right. definitely with cancellation and also getting things set up in my last apartment because. That was a whole huge headache trying to deal with that. And you not only helped me to find these utility services, but uh, your team also did price comparisons to find out what would be the best deals in the area. So that was something that I definitely appreciated. And I'm glad to hear that it's also a part of the regular services that you offer, because I know you did it anyway, um, but I'm glad to hear that it's also a part of your relocation services now, because that's definitely a, I've done certain things on my own and I, I got certain things set up, but you guys were definitely a major help that made a massive difference, even for me as somebody who could set up some of these things with difficulty having you guys there made a major difference in my life at the time. Well, you, you know, a lot of people, they, they don't expect this to be uh, difficult. And the reality is that it's something that you need to think about maybe 10 days to two weeks in advance before you move into your property, because it's not that easy. It's not that uh, quick. You know, yeah. you have to call, uh, you have to decide which provider you want. We have seven in Italy for each service and you have to maybe compare pricing. And then uh, if there was another tenant, if we're talking about rentals, you need to get the, the last utility bill from that person. And if you don't, it will be a little bit more difficult to set up utilities for you. But if you get the last bill, then it's a little bit easier. And it could be that you can just restore their service if their service was suspended or terminated or if it's still active, you need to transfer it over onto your name, but that's not that's not immediate or easy. So that's why a lot of people, yeah. they ask us to help with that. And I've heard of situations also where like really having that lead time can make a big difference. Like, especially if you're out in the middle of nowhere, someplace without a lot of access, more further out into the deep Italian countryside, uh, that sometimes even getting some of the services to come out could be anywhere from not just a few days to a few weeks, but in rare, extreme, extreme circumstances, maybe even a few months. Again, like waiting a few months is gonna be an extreme and very unusual, and it probably would be very unlikely that the average person would experience anything like that. But uh, another thing though, that I think could be worthwhile just quickly talking about would be uh, getting healthcare set up because, of course, one of the benefits to living in Italy is the healthcare system that it's one of the top in the world. And so, how do you help your clients get set up with that? Yeah, so uh, healthcare in Italy is mostly free of charge. And even when you have to pay, normally it's a fraction of the cost of what you would pay in another country or in, in the US. And um, enrolling involves uh, visiting a local office in person. And normally we accompany our clients, we go with them um, and, and enrolling. Um, it, it's, it's not a long process, but it does take a few days. 
and you need to have a residency permit or you need to be a citizen and you also need to be registered as a resident and you need to have a, a tax code mm -hmm. and in some cases an Italian ID. So all of the other things that, that I mentioned before in this episode are something that basically are a almost a prerequisite for registering with a national healthcare system. And once you register, you will be assigned a local uh, practitioner, a doctor who you can go to free of charge. Um, I remember just to explain briefly how this works, because it's something I'd say somewhat different from what happens in another country, but um, a few years um, before, a few years back, and uh, definitely before the health emergency, I remember I was just going to the doctor's office and you know, get in line and wait for my turn. Uh, but now it's basically mostly um, you go uh, by appointment, so you have to book an appointment and then you can oh, wow. visit your doctor. And the doctor is something that, is somebody that you go to when you have to uh, get a prescription or talk about general health problems and he or she will then direct you to a specialist um, or maybe tell you that you have to do some exams or, or whatever is necessary and for whatever they cannot help you with because they're general practitioners um, they will just tell you you have to go to a specialized more specialized doctor which is also free of charge in italy and if you go through the normal channels uh and and you get in line and, and you book your appointment it's it's basically almost completely free of charge there are people who prefer to go to somebody in some some cases that they pay um when they are in a rush or they have the ability to pay for the service to, to get it quicker, even if it doesn't necessarily mean to get it quicker, because the, the national healthcare system in Italy is is quick already, but for some services it's quicker to go to a private uh, doctor that you pay. But even the cost of a private doctor is not as expensive as it would be if you were to go to a private doctor in other countries like in in America and also yeah. even the emergency room in Italy is either free or very low cost um, and it's it's a fraction still a fraction of the cost of what you would pay if you were to visit a, 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 an emergency room in the US without uh, an insurance for example definitely and I think it's actually worth highlighting here how low the prices can be because i've had conversations with people it's like you tell them like oh yeah it's only a small fraction of the price but like come on oh so what a few hundred dollars oh no 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 <laughs> that's definitely going to be way more expensive than you would even have to think about i mean i know people in the states that don't think about going to the emergency room until it's like like really an emergency whereas in italy i've known some people to go f to the emergency room for maybe a really bad tummy ache <laughs> i mean i hate to put it like that but uh, just to give the example of a price potential because it may depend on the region but i had to get x-rays done i fell down some stairs i couldn't walk it's just really bad situation and so they x-rayed my back and made sure i was okay and offered all kinds of pain medications ivs and this plus check up with the nurse, checking in with the doctor, and then a nurse again with the x-rays and everything, the whole total for that ordeal, 15 euros. So that was, <laughs> and when I tell Americans about this, like, what, no way, it can't be, to just breathe the same air as the doctor. Oh. Yeah, in Italy, it's like there is this uh, completely different um, uh, way of seeing this, where you tell people, I had to pay to go to the emergency room. They're like, really, you had to pay? Why it wasn't free? So it's like the opposite situation. Yeah. Even if you pay maybe just a few euros. Yeah. And like even in those like extremely grave situations where it would be free, because in the emergency rooms in Italy, like, and I've done videos about this in the past on my channel on YouTube where it talks about um, there's different code levels for how extreme it is what you need if you're at the basic level then they're basically going to kick you out or charge you like 60 euros because it wasn't a real emergency or anything like problematic at all I mean it depends on where you are because again the prices can vary but they'll get a little annoyed with you but if it's like a like a real situation like um, again another situation I had to go to the ER I had burnt my hand when I was there and it was again for going to the doctor and this and that, another 15 euros. And then 
I had a family member who had a much more like extreme situation, broken bone and had to stay in the hospital with surgery and uh, physical therapy, ended up staying in the hospital for about a month and including all of the care, food and everything. And that was actually a thing, the food itself, I was heard, was told uh, was very impressive for hospital food, Italian hospital food, uh, supposedly from, from their account, uh, really outdid anything you would find in the States, even with some gluten-free options as well on the public system. I was impressed by that. But that, including ambulance transfers from one hospital to another and getting picked up by the ambulance, everything overall completely free because of the the gravity of the situation it, it was yeah i was so grateful for that when we found out that this this family member wouldn't have to deal with that because like it, it's a it's a family thing it's like if you if you if one goes through it you're all there together to help each other and so that was a huge relief for all of us um, during that that moment, but it was amazing because they took care of this this relative and uh, whatever. I'm not going to get into it, but I think it's worthwhile n making a, a good note about that because of how different the mentality is and how different the access is when you're considering a country like the U.S. versus. Italy, the, the the major differences between the two when it comes to healthcare. Aside from all those examples and stories, are there any other uh, services that you're able to offer? And I'm sure everything that we're talking about in this episode is only going to scratch the surface. But is there anything that maybe we haven't uh, touched on in this episode? Yeah, I'd say most people, they ask us to help them with uh, property management. So when they buy a property, like I said, some people rent first and then they buy, uh, but some other people, they buy directly a property with us from the U.S. But either way, they what they normally ask us to help them with is the uh, payment of the bills, payment of property taxes, um, annual taxes. Um, and, and of course, you know, we help with the, but this we said in in many other episodes with help with the whole purchase process so including finding a notary and, and going to the um, notary to sign the deed and even before we help enter into a preliminary agreement we do due diligence we help with a um, uh, property tax which is a one-time tax that you pay at the time of the purchase but we also help with whatever comes after the purchase meaning uh, payment of um, annual taxes and even for those people who choose to live in a condominium complex we help them with um, you know a, a, all of the things that come with having your unit within a condominium complex so paying the property manager or handling you know understanding how uh, the payments are divided between the uh, owners of the different units which in some older buildings it's, it's calculated in a very odd way and then you know managing the heating and then how you pay the central heating uh what is your personal portion of the uh, payment understanding why you have to pay that specific person based on how large your unit is it's not easy in italy and i'm sure you can confirm that because you lived in a condominium complex yeah. yourself and it's yeah. it's not easy so that's what we help people with yeah, it's it's a very it's a very strange situation. I mean, in some situations, you'll find that the heating, if it's central com communal condominium heating, uh, and it's a shared boiler, that your landlord may cover that within the cost of the rent, uh, but it won't always be that situation. But if you're owning it yourself, then it's something you definitely have to be aware of because, say, you don't use a lot of heat in the winter, but someone else in the building uses a lot of heat in the winter, then you'll end up paying a portion of what they're going to be using because it's not just about your usage it's about everybody's usage overall and if you're living in a big building that can definitely start adding up or actually depending on how many people are in the building how many apartments uh, it can really be uh, divided up but very much a consideration to keep in mind if that is a factor in the type of place that you're looking at not all places are like that but i know for me it would be something that i would personally when looking in for real estate in Italy, like an apartment or something, I would try to find something with autonomous heating. That would be something that I might look at if I were yeah. looking at an, another place in Italy. Or thank God, you know, even those apartments that doesn't have 
uh, the autonomous heating that you just mentioned, thank God they're uh, basically putting these sensors in the heaters that help calculate what are what are you what you're actually using, so you don't have a, end up paying what somebody else is using, like you just said. Yeah. So, thank God, like with the exception of the maybe older buildings in the center and 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 like i said like luckily they are they're slowly all starting to adopt the system those um, condominiums that don't have um the um heating for every unit but where the situations where every unit is depending on a central heating they are yeah. starting to install these uh, sensors which really help um make the situation more fair where everybody is actually paying the heating that they're using Marco, I think this is going to be a great place to round out this episode. Of course, thank you so much for making yourself available. And, and if anybody wants to get in contact with you and your team uh, for uh, your services to help them relocate to Italy, how can they do that? Yeah, people who want to use this, I'd say, A to Z service that we were offering, they can um, email us or contact us through the website or give us a phone call or number is on the website absolutely fantastic and of course if you're interested in more conversations like this about italian real estate moving to italy making italy your home be sure that you are subscribed to this youtube channel as well as the audio only podcast but of course if you're subscribed to the youtube channel you're also automatically subscribed to the other project that marco and i collaborate on the italian citizen trip podcast where we talk about some of the legal sides of moving to italy like marco was talking about italian citizenship by descent through marriage or through uh, residency some of these topics can, we've gone into very very high detail and uh, it's, it's, i can say i'm very proud of, of what we've the library of content that we've been able to put together on that so of course also if you're interested in more content about life abroad living abroad and information about being a dual citizen expat living in europe be sure to come over to my youtube channel youtube.com slash rafael di furia or you can look for not your average globetrotter for the audio only podcast but of course mr marco permunian from italian real estate lawyers.com thank you so much again for making yourself available i'm rafael di furia stay safe and healthy out there and we will see you all next time later thank you